YouTube, what's up? We do Q&As every day on Instagram or every other day. I try to help you out, but no offense. I love you. This is out of um, love. You know, sometimes critique can hurt. But you ask the worst questions. I can't increase my squat. What the hell does that mean? What's the actual issue? I want to help you, but I can't do it in 15 seconds on Instagram. So welcome to YouTube. Today we're answering your questions. I'm here to help you out. I got a little push day. That's getting crazy, huh? Throw some filters on it. Make me look like a, who's that really jack kid that lifts a lot of weight? Russ Swole. Yeah, make me look like Russell Swole, sir. I don't have to change the skin tone. Nah, a little saturation <laughs> and a little Photoshop, and it's crazy. You guys wouldn't guess that me and Russ are related, but we are. We're related. We're all related. We're all one. Let's hop in the video. Kyle's on the way. I'm warming up. Push day, tricep, shoulder, benchy poo. I'll show you a lot more of my accessories. We're gonna answer your questions as we go. Give this thing a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. New videos every what? Tuesday and Thursday. Appreciate you. All right, so uh, an easy one. How do you normally warm up for squat, bench, deadlift? Um, I've done some videos, I've done some TikToks. And warm up, it, it, people overcomplicate it. You don't need all these tools. You definitely don't need a vibrator. Keep that in the alone time. What we'll do is a, a, a full body warm up to a more specific warm up. And so that depends on the movement, the goals. And in between, there might be some specifics or some individuality on things that might be feel a little tighter to you or honestly, you can do things that just feel good. Um, you know me, I'm a little anti-gimmick and I'm anti-foam roller, but if it really makes you feel good, hit that thing for a couple minutes. Just don't be sitting on it for 20. But I get a full body warm up, a walk, a jog, an elliptical, a bicycle. Get a little sweat going, five to 10 minutes, breathe heavy, sweat a little bit. From there, I start to get more specific. So for me, I like to lift for my mobility. Movement is my medicine, and I believe it is yours too. So if I'm squatting, maybe I'll do some body weight lunges. Maybe I'll do some air squats. Maybe I'll even do a goblet squat because sometimes it allows you to hit a little bit more depth before you get to the barbell. But other than that, I'm getting under the barbell and I'm taking an empty bar for two sets of 10. Boom. Maybe it's three sets of 10 for you. Maybe it's you know, three sets of five or whatever. But we're going to move and then we're just going to start loading weight. Deadlift something similar. Maybe I'll do a kettlebell swing after my full body warm up. Maybe I'll do some good mornings with a band around my body and get some hamstring and glute uh, uh, blood going. Maybe I'll do some RDLs and bent over rows with the barbell, do a little barbell complex. Bench, very similar, full body, maybe some push-ups. I like to do some face pulls, some rear delts, really get my traps and mid back fired up to get ready to get tightness. Um, otherwise, I'm just slowly ramping up, man. Don't overcomplicate things. Get warm without getting tired. Prep yourself for the movement you're doing and let's leave the gimmicks at the door. Next set. This is from Good Company. Avelia asks, how do you curb sugar cravings if you have any? I'm probably the worst person to ask well, about this. Curbing, I always try to find like a substitute, like something that's similar. Okay. Like, uh, so like for example, um, if I'm craving ice cream, sometimes if I don't want to have like ice cream, I'll get like a Rice Krispie treat as like, it's not terrible, terrible. It's not as, like dude, a Rice Krispie's not as. Sometimes what I really want, it's to eat a brownie? A, no, 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 no. When no. I want a brownie, and I say, Mike, you can't have a brownie. I grab a chocolate chip cookie, and then I... Okay, a pint of ice cream is what? Uh, how many calories, Mike? Like a Ben and Jerry's. Get, just get, spit some facts here. Probably a thou, a thou out. And a, 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 a Rice Krispie yay size. Uh, are we going yay size? Yes, a yay size. Yay size? Yay, one, one. Okay, maybe 300. 600 calorie deficit. 600. And that's how you get the physique of a Greek god. We're out. So, uh, tips on cravings and dieting and all that. I know there's a huge culture in dieting. I'm, I'm not a food psychologist, so, you know, everyone's always constantly talking about balance and not restricting and, and eating what you want while losing weight. 
But the truth is some of us just have trigger foods, and that's what I call it. There's certain foods, types of foods, that if I eat them, now all I want to do is eat more calorie dense food. So for example, one for me is like chips. I can't just have, I can weigh and measure my chips, but as soon as I eat that, I'm gonna want ice cream and cake and all this stuff. I can't stop eating it. So I just don't eat chips. Is that restrictive and unhealthy? Is that an eating disorder? I don't know, but I have goals. And the truth is balance, balance, this is what I thought about in the shower this morning, not to get rated R. Balance, everyone thinks of as a static thing. Like I have uh, now stepped into balance. But the truth is balance is dynamic. It's constantly moving and you have to constantly make micro adjustments to stay in some type of equilibrium. Stop thinking about balance as a destination and rather as a process that moves and flows with what you need and what you want. And so right now I'm cutting. So I just don't eat chips. It's not that big of a deal. I can still eat fruit and rice and um, even have a cookie here and there. I'll, main, uh, I'll, I'll track a cookie. I can have some sweets or junk food and not have an issue. But for me personally, it's chips. And for you, it might be ice cream. It might be Rice Krispies. It might be nothing also. You may not have a trigger food depending on how you were raised or your relationship with food or your taste buds even. But find those foods and that if you're dieting or trying to lose weight may not be something in your arsenal. Now, I don't think we should restrict ourselves from all foods, right? Then we're gonna have probably fall into some type of eating disorder where we get into an emotional attachment to eating brownies, ice cream, and we feel bad when we eat it, but then we feel bad and we're stressed, so we go eat junk food, and it's a vicious cycle, as Fat Bastard said in Goldmember. That's not what we want either. But identifying some things that send you off the deep end, that uh, don't allow you to have moderation or control when you're eating, is probably something we should all identify. Street Barbell if you want your questions answered. Any tips on what to do after finishing a cut or a diet? So a cut is kind of just a you know fitness term or bodybuilding term for losing weight or getting leaner. Um, and what to do afterwards is a very good question. Uh, a lot of it depends on your goals. If you're a strength athlete, obviously we're cutting or hopefully getting leaner to maintain our strength and reach a different weight class, right? Because when you're competing in strength sports, it's a like weight class based sport. And so the stronger you are at the lighter body weight, the better your score, your dots, your wilks, depending on strong man, wherever you compete. St. Clair, I believe, if you're a weightlifter. Um, if you're just an everyday person and you're generally healthy, a lot of it is just your goals. You know, some people don't compete in bodybuilding. Majority of people just lift weights and they don't actually step on stage, but they'll still go through bulking, gaining weight, gaining muscle phases, and cutting, getting leaner phases to slowly like kind of two steps forward, one step back methodology uh, to gain more lean muscle mass, look better, feel better, and just generally have more muscle. So I can't necessarily answer because I don't know your goals, but those are some of the options. Um, my number one goal when I'm losing weight right now, and I haven't done it very well in my entire life, is I'm gonna try to lose weight get down to 190, 195, 200 pounds, 207 as of today. And I'm gonna to try to maintain that body weight for a year. Um, I've always been in an athletic, a performance-based mindset, so when I'm trying to gain weight, I'm always trying to get strong. If I'm trying to lose weight, I'm always trying to get in a weight class. I've never actually maintained my body weight in my life. Even playing sports a little bit, but it doesn't really count when you're in high school because you have no concept of what's going on. But I was always constantly gaining or losing depending on season of basketball. So I'm gonna try to lose some weight. I'm gonna try to maintain my weight. Uh, we'll see where we go. But a lot of it depends on your goals. Comment below what you guys' goals are. And that's it for today, man. New video every single Tuesday and Thursday. I appreciate you guys so much. We're gonna finish the workout. I'll catch you in the next one. Third Street Barbell, 50% facts, 3SB.co. I'm Salamaka. Catch you in the next one.